Hi, this is Josh again, back with you. So now we've covered logging into AFID, signing up for a flight, preparing for that flight, and now we cover what undoubtedly will be your favorite part of the angel flight process, is flying your beautiful airplane um, and helping someone in need. So we just talked about preparation. You're talking to your passenger where and when to meet, setting expectations and so forth. So you're going to confirm those expectations, obviously, when they arrive. Um, if, if you can't find them, feel free to contact the office at any time. Call those numbers that you have, um, and we can step in and help uh, when needed. Uh, but, again, most of the time your passenger is going to be there, and you're going to meet and welcome them and introduce them to your airplane. Again, make sure everything that you've covered um, in the preparation process, including companions and weights and so forth, are all there and accounted for. If there's changes, again, notify the office. And at this point, you take them out to your plane and you get started. Now, you have done all the due diligence of this process. You're the expert uh, of your plane, and you're the expert pilot. So you've done your flight planning. You've done all your weight and balance checks. You've uh, done all the safety considerations that you need to to safely operate your plane. We would also recommend filing a flight plan, um, even if you're VFR to follow a flight, flight following uh, pattern, so we can, at the office, know where you are in the event anything comes up while you're in air. You know, uh, the doctor's office is looking for them, the ground transportation is looking for them, your handoff pilot is looking for you, that type of thing, so we can keep everybody uh, on time and on schedule as, as much as we can. Um, you can also use the angel flight call sign, which gives you some preferential treatment. It's also just a good way to know what angel flights are out there, and that's November Golf Foxtrot in the last three of your tail number. We have another document out there that will explain how that process works a little bit better uh, that you can access. What we've also provided for this part of the, uh, of the process is an angel flight welcome card. It's a good little handy thing to give to a passenger uh, to set their expectations. We have them available in English and Spanish, and while I'm on the Spanish note, uh, we do have uh, Spanish speakers here in the office that can help you uh, with translation, uh, either before the flight process or uh, in a pre-flight uh, process, uh, as well as some handy phrases and so forth uh, that you might find useful. Um, once you've gone over that, you, they may need some assistance getting in and out of the plane. Um, we do require people to be ambulatory and medically stable, but again, you know, they're in varying levels of illness, so they may need assistance getting in and out of that plane. Uh, and we thank you for helping them out there. Once they're in, again, safety considerations, giving them uh, an idea of what's going on in the plane. Uh, we do find that passengers are put at ease. Some, some are nervous, some are the first-time flyer. So explaining what things are and how things work and why you're pre-flight checking and all those things are really reassuring to patients. And also encouraging flight-related questions is helpful as well. Uh, now, once they're on your board and on board your plane and flying, you are going to experience varying levels of comfortability with the passenger. Some people are going to be nervous and very chatty, so feel free to remind them of what a sterile cockpit is and isolate them if necessary. Uh, some people are going to say hardly anything or fall asleep in your plane. Uh, and then there are occasions where you're going to find someone that might be sullen um, or not talkative. Um, we don't know how we're going to react when uh, illness or a crisis comes along you or a loved one. Um, and so just be prepared for any of those um, reactions. You may get an indication of that in your flight planning process of the type of person this is. Um, but as much as we would love to guarantee that everyone walks away with a warm and fuzzy feeling after an angel flight, sometimes you don't get that. Sometimes you don't even get a thank you. Um, and again, they're going through different crises in their life. They may feel um, like they're getting something for free is awkward for them. Um, they may uh, just not have the communication or wherewithal uh, to be on top of things and, and to be as grateful as, as we would like them to be. Uh, and we do encourage that. Um, so that's what's going on in the flight. Should you run into something that's concerning or you feel like is out of line with the angel flight experience or process, please notify the office. Um, we do some vetting. We talk to them on the phone. But we often don't meet these people face to face, so you're our boots on the ground in that aspect. And we want to control that experience as much as we can and make sure people are, um, are operating as we would like them to. Um, so notify us and we can step in and, and respond appropriately in those situations uh, and do the follow-up necessary to make sure that everyone's having a great angel flight experience and that things are going as, as we would hope. 
Um, we also recommend on the day of the flight that you wear a badge. Um, you can get your put your photo on that in the application process, or you can send an email to badge at angelflightwest.org at any time. There are some handy sort of tips and steps here on the back that will walk you through the day of the flight uh, operation. And if you have Angel Flight merchandise, we encourage wearing that. That is also available on our website um, through Land's End, where you can purchase some Angel Flight um, gear. Now, we don't require either gear or a badge to fly an Angel Flight West mission, but we do find that it helps passengers find you, other pilots fly you, and to generally promote the great work that Angel Flight's doing in general. The other thing we would encourage is taking photos uh, before, during, and after the flight. It's a good way to tell our story to your family, your community, to let them know the great ways you're using your airplane to help others. Uh, and Angel Flight uses those as well, as well in communication materials on our website and so forth uh, to help tell the great work that we're doing. If you should run into anything else on the flight or anything that you need help with, again, the Angel Flight West office is here to assist in those situations. Uh, we talked about the waiver last time, uh, electronic and paper form. That would need to be signed plain sight on the day of the flight, too, and, um, and sent to Angel Flight West offices via electronically or fax or uh, by the mail. So that covers the day of the flight, and next up we'll cover what happens after the flight. Thanks again.